to work in this way on an egg, it's such a kind of a detail-oriented practice. You're very in the moment, like you are not thinking, you know, it's almost like a meditative practice. This style of decorating the egg is pisanki. The idea of decorating an egg, eggs in themselves as a symbol of renewal, new life, it's really a spiritual kind of practice. Some of the folklore says every time you do a pisanki egg, is you're eliminating some evil in the world. So the decorating process is very akin to batik. You are uh, blocking out areas with wax, uh, melted wax, and then progressively dipping in different color dyes, usually starting with a lighter color and then going to darker color. It's almost like working in reverse, you know? Like when you put your first line on your egg, it's white. And so you have to remember that that's gonna be white at the end um, and it's gonna be revealed. The most fun part of teaching the classes is the reveal, because a lot of times people can't quite wrap their head around what's going on. You know, the wax, because the wax is covering the color and they can't see it. And so they don't quite get it. But once it's like an aha moment, and that you're melting that wax and wiping it off, and it's like, ah. It's really the magical part of it is when you get that reveal. So I grew up in uh, Brooklyn, in New York City, and uh, every Easter season or pre-Easter season, my parents would take us into the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Um, there was a Ukrainian decorative arts store there, but they also had uh, pisanki kits, and they had pisanki for sale, and they, my parents purchased kits and brought it home, and we would make pisanki pretty much every year when Easter rolled around. Um, my background was Belarus. My mom and grandparents came from Belarus, although I had a great-great-grandmother who came from the Ukraine, but I had never met her. My family's history comes with an understanding, or at least the Belarusian side, that um, during the time that my grandparents fled, the Soviet Union was taking over Belarus. And so anything that was related to their Slavic heritage, language, tradition, was not allowed to be expressed. So growing up in the United States, um, my grandparents made it very clear that it, it preserving your heritage was a very important part of knowing who you were. What's happening with uh, Ukraine and how the Russian invasion, what they're trying to do is they're trying to assimilate the Ukrainian culture into Russia. Watching the news and hearing those stories and listening to the news and hearing languages that I heard as a child, it just, it, it is, hit home so deeply, this, this terrible war. I, I, I can't even express it. Language and art and, and food, that all helps you preserve who you are um, because it was given to you as a gift from your ancestors. It is a force into itself, and it is a more powerful force than destruction. My daughter CJ and I, we've been making eggs for you know, ever since she was a kid, and we thought, well, let's make some and sell them, and then uh, Christy Farrell from the Cedar Run contacted me and said, I'd like to facilitate classes. You know, she was on the same wavelength, and I thought, that's perfect, because it'll get a much further reach this way. And uh, then she also found, uh, made a partnership with Lake Placid Center for the Arts to auction the eggs off. So it was kind of a two-part fundraising effort. We, the, the money from all the money that came in from the classes and then the, uh, the auctioning of the eggs. It's all going to World Central Kitchen, uh, Ukraine. So it goes to feed refugees. Roughly $6,000, about 3,000 for the classes and 3,000 from the auction of the eggs. It helps take away some of the sadness that I have doing this, I guess, knowing that I can contribute somehow. I think in the face of destruction, if you cannot physically defend things, you can do something else. You can maintain and help preserve the culture that is under attack. And that's what's happening right now. You know, the culture of Ukraine is under attack. 
Pisanki and the practice of Pisanki, it's this powerful spiritual practice. Households in Ukraine have practiced for years and years. Traditionally, it is meant to uh, overcome evil. It just seems so relevant. The smallest little movements on a tiny little fragile egg, it's a power that's manifesting, and it manifests in so many ways, you know, in people sharing, in, in the money that we raised, that's going to turn into food, that's going to feed people who have suffered destruction and loss in, in a way that I could never even imagine. One really fine Pisanki artist calls it saving the world one egg at a time which I think is a lovely sentiment.